Hello, ladies and gents. Welcome to my reaction on the Insider article on PES 2022, kindly shared by Cam Maldino. I'm going to leave links to his YouTube and Twitter pages as a little thank you to him. He's a top lad and we've played a bit of online My Club Corp recently. Um, so whilst the title and much of this document reiterates photorealism, it wasn't actually that that got my attention because... I already know what the Unreal 4 engine is capable of from a graphical point of view. You know, we're not going to see the Unreal 5 engine, as I mentioned about three to six months ago in one of my news articles. So, you know, it's going to be the Unreal 4 engine. I'll mark out the important parts of the article with some of the numbers that I'm going to focus on and actual quotes from Kimura, who is the producer at Konami Digital Entertainment. And then I'll react to them as we go. So point one, Kimura is asked, what does a PS5 next gen football game need to offer? And he replies saying, I think it's important to be able to experience the excitement and sense of accomplishment that football has in the game, not to mention being able to play games in photorealism. I like the fact that he focuses on the excitement and accomplishment um, that football has in the game before talking about the photorealism. Now, to me, he's, from there, he's sort of referring to the gameplay first before the graphics. I could be wrong, but that's just the first impression I got. And that wouldn't surprise me as, you know, the gameplay for the large majority of the PES series has always been the main priority. Even if, you know, they've not met that in some iterations. And that has been sometimes due to the engine change as we saw with PES 2014, which is absolutely horrific in my point of view. So in point number two, he was then asked about the challenges of meeting such expectation on the PS5 around the desire for photorealism. Kimura praises the PS5 capability and benefits of the powerful new console, but then went on to say that they've encountered many challenges and feel like they're steadily approaching the next level step by step before going on to say that there are some restrictions which make it extremely difficult road to reach the next level. You know, he went on to say it's because of the photorealism that they aim for is exactly the reproduction of the real world itself. So to me here, he's saying they want photorealism, but, and that's, that's the sort of end goal, but due to the limitations and restrictions, probably because the PS5 simply can't offer that, whether that's due to the system capability or the hard drive size, I'm not entirely sure, but don't expect it in PES 2022. Something we may be closer to witnessing in PES 2023 once they port the code over to the Unreal 5 engine. Kimura then goes on to say in point three, this next level realism includes atmosphere of the stadium and the enthusiastic supporters, the players, passionate facial expressions, the textures of the skin and hair and detailed movement of their muscles and sweat, even the seams of the uniform. This is my, actually my f sort of personal favorite point in the whole article because we know the graphics are going to be a step up even on the Unreal 4 engine and that's nothing new to me as I previously mentioned. But the fact he mentions about the realistic atmosphere within the stadium, the stadium, like the crowds and the atmosphere has generally always been forgotten about in pretty much all of the Provo games. So for me, it sounds like this is going to be addressed in PES 2022. And I'm really looking forward to that because I don't know about you guys, but I literally switch off. Like my brain switches off the crowd noise in the background. I don't even hear it half the time because it's just like, it's just like a, a sound in the background that you just sort of forget about. So hopefully they're going to bring those uh, chants and, and that realistic atmosphere to PES 2022. If they do, that's going to be a massive thing. That's that to me is more important than the photorealism because, or or the you know the graphical improvements. I don't really care about the graphics to be honest. I I grew up in an era where, um, you know, graphics were not the the be all and end all. It was all about the gameplay. So, for me, gameplay first. Then I would say, graphics and sound are very very close second. Like very very close to each other in my opinion. Maybe graphics take the slight edge. But then sound has to be really, really important, especially when it comes to uh, the crowd and everything, because that's the whole part of, um, you know, playing playing the game of football. That roar from the crowd really adds to it. Anyway, so point four, you know, he adds that we can say that photorealism could be achieved, but only by reproducing all of these phenomena 
and to get there we need to face yet more challenges so to me this is kind of worrying because he's mentioned some of the great things about the crowd the atmosphere and greater graphical detail but then he sort of quickly caveats that and says you know we may not get everything he says anyway so you know this does give me a bit of cause for concern that this game is nowhere near ready for release or we're possibly going to get a half-baked game but you know i'm really hoping i'm wrong but it's just i don't know it just doesn't um fill me with confidence let's put it that way so point five he adds that in his opinion it's about recreating the world itself again i think this is just a tad ambitious with the ps5 maybe next year when they port the code over to unreal engine 5 uh, they got the meta-human technology and all the rest of the, the good stuff that we're seeing. We'll get close, but I still doubt it'll be photorealistic as we're just simply bound by that hardware. Point six, you know, Kamara goes on to say, the general definition would be reproducing a live action expression. However, that alone can lead to an inorganic and imperfect world. We believe that photorealism will be completely will be completed by adding various elements to impress users. Users know what the players look like. They've seen the enthusiastic supporters and they felt the atmosphere in the stadium. Therefore, the virtual uh, virtual deception is much harder. However, this is the exact reason why we feel the challenge in the field in this field is worth it. To me, it sounds like they're aiming for realism from the gameplay to the graphics, to the atmosphere, but are finding it difficult to recreate that virtually, but they're gonna go for it anyway. I just love the ambition and the goal, but I just don't expect that perfection with the first iteration on a new engine. I, I, just, I just think it's way too ambitious. Then Kimura does get a little bit technical in point seven. He says, one specific example is that the Unreal Engine Designers can take on various tasks without programmers help by using the blueprint. Uh, blueprint. I assume this is some sort of tutorial maybe or, or something along, along those lines to help, you know, help the programmers. But, you know, if you're out there and you've had experience of using the Unreal 4 engine or with coding and you know what they're talking about, just drop a comment below because, uh, you know, it'd be great to understand that from a, uh, from a, you know, from a basic pleb like myself who knows nothing about programming. Um, so by doing so, we believe that we can improve production speed, improve the skills of individual designers and receive many other benefits. It's interesting to understand how the Unreal Engine not only benefits us as consumers, but speeds things up from a development point of view. And I imagine the designers are going to be impressed with the tools available on the powerful new engine, which is Unreal 4. Point eight, Kimura says, of course, factors such as lighting, animation, frame rate, and resolution are very important and necessary, but this is not enough. In addition to these elements, we must have the knowledge and skills of a camera for photo development in order to obtain photorealism. We learn how an actual lens captures the light and other features and consider that expressing these phenomena is important. I find this really interesting as it's something many of us take for granted when watching a game on TV, how the lens changes certain things from a camera to how you see them in real life. Again, I still think we're so far away from capturing photorealism with the current hardware available, even on the PS5. Point nine, Kimura then goes on to say, animations are real at the time of motion capture, but how the animations are used in game is important and AI determines that. So obviously until the Unreal 5 engine is released, we won't see the meta human technology. So animations are still gonna be captured via motion capture and I'm okay with that. I believe that with the Unreal 4 engine, we'll have the most fluid animations we've ever seen in a PES game. If not this year, over the next few iterations of PES, because I base that evidence on other games that use the Unreal engine. And I'll leave a link to, to a indie developed game where the animations are just so fluid, it's ridiculous. So go and check that out in the description below. Point 10, Kimura then adds, if something goes wrong here, users will not be able to concentrate on the game. It is necessary for players to choose the right movements in the game to create realism. I think he's talking about the responsiveness here. After talking about the animations and the motion capture, he's saying if it's unresponsive, we won't be able to concentrate on the game, which is good because the best PES games were the most responsive in my opinion. 
there can't be any form of input delay and i'm happy that he solves that's that's the impression i get from that um that quote there finally the interviewer asks if messi will have the most realistic beard yet i'm not going to lie i actually cringed at this point but Kamara responded by saying look forward to the quality of messi and to see if he has a beard or not when the next title is released so from this whole article, I got the impression from this interview that as soon as Kimura mentioned photorealism in his first, I think it was his first paragraph, you know, he literally jumped all over that and it was a reoccurring question, which was a bit of a shame. You know, he didn't ask about the gameplay, how the controls may have changed, any new game mechanics, new modes, whether there's going to be more or less animations. I just felt like Kimura was just led down a path to focus purely on the word photorealism and then it just felt like the interview became a little bit awkward i just want to share with you about a little bit about the background of kimura because it's actually interesting to see where he fits in at konami in terms of his role in the article it mentions he's a producer and developer and if we look at his game credits history we can see he was a director for pez 2013 which was a great game 2014 which was bad 2015 which was also bad he then oversees 2016 from an assistant producer which saw a little bit of an improvement and then even greater improvements for pez 2017 and 2018 where he stayed in the same role which in my opinion were two of the best pezes in recent history and then he was a line producer for pez 2020 this to me is quite interesting how he dropped down from a director role to when the game was really suffering so it looks like Kimura could have a positive positive impact on PES 2022 and beyond in this producer stroke developer role lastly I just want to bring you some news on FIFA 23 yep 23 not 22 EA are recruiting an online software engineer and on the job description they kind of leaked their strategy for FIFA 23 because they mentioned about an online career mode which to me is super exciting if they can get their gameplay sorted. That's one thing that sort of annoys me with the PES series. They bring in some excellent features and then just remove them or forget all about them. Like the online Master League in PES 2013, removal of some of the additional controls such as the knock-on or they change the finesse dribbling to the right stick. You know, they make these changes and they're generally not for the better. It would be nice if they had some feedback where you can just say, look, you know, the finesse dribbling is just much better with the trigger um, and just leave the right analog stick to the skills. Anyway, I, I, that, that's for another video, I guess. But that's all for me, ladies and gents. Hope you have a great day and I'll see you in my next video, which will probably be goals of the month. So be sure to stay tuned for that. Until next time, guys, take care of yourselves, stay safe, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.